Production funding is provided by A. Reddix and Associates Health Information Resource Center, offering short-term training for long-term professional careers in medical coding. HIRCVA.net. Discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African American community. This is another view. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Let me ask you something. Do you have health insurance? Can you go to a doctor when you're sick? Do you have access to health care that is close and affordable? Or are you like many who have no insurance, have trouble traveling to get quality care, and use the emergency room like a clinic? Now, for those of you on the peninsula who fall into the second category, we have some great news. Free primary and dental care for the uninsured. Here to tell us about the Community Free Clinic of Newport News is Executive Director Golden Hill, Reverend Lawrence Willis, board member of the clinic, the Honorable Mamie Baycoat, delegate from the 95th District representing the East End of Newport News, and Gray Bowditch, Interim Director of the Community Free Clinic. Welcome to the program, everybody. Thanks Thank for you. joining me this evening. Thank you. I want to start with you, Delegate Baycoat, because I think that because of news coverage a lot, that people have a perception of the East End, that it is crime ridden and that, you know, no one's doing anything positive. But tell us who the real people are who live there and survive and thrive there every day? I think it's the people that are sitting around here right now, people that are interested in what is needed in our area, and that is many, many people. Starting out with Golden, she has a vision that is going to change the whole population of the Southeast End. But and I mean, there are a lot of working families there. Sure, there are people are. who, because I think we see when we watch the news all the time, since we hear so much crime, we don't get the full <coughs> picture of what the neighborhood is like. Well, that's because of the media wanting to sell mm -hmm. papers, wanting them to watch on TV, things that they think will make people interested in. What we were talking about coming over is trying to find a way in which we can let people see the real Newport News. And we have good people that are honest working people that want you to see what is really good about Newport News. And I want you to see what's good about Newport News. Now this clinic is uh, your brainchild, is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine along with some help with the community, <laughs> yes. But what happened, there used to be a hospital in, in the East End, if I'm not there mistaken. There used to be Whitaker Memorial Hospital, and that hospital closed. Uh, as other hospitals opened up, uh, there was major competition for health care because other hospitals had a lot more money and had great access to technology. And as a result, patients started to have a choice of where they could go. Mm -hmm. And Whitaker survived a long time and provided great support for our community, but had to close. And then there was Newport News General who followed and closed shortly after that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Reverend Willis, in terms of people having access, close access to care, on that East End, that's been missing for a while. You're absolutely correct. And when we take a look at the demographics, we recognize that there are limited health care delivery uh, services in the community. Uh, one of the outstanding uh, uh, services that are available is PITCH, uh, which is a, um, a community health care center, but mm -hmm. they cannot support and provide the assistance and the medical support for the large number of individuals in the southeast community who actually need need the health care assistance. Mm -hmm. That's good. Gray, how did you get involved? I actually sit on the board and recently uh, got more and more interested in helping out uh, the community um, and through Golden uh, and my interest with the southeast community and the city as a whole. Uh, I, through sort of volunteering, I, I guess, was sort of chosen by the board to be an interim director during its startup phase. Okay. Now let's get down to some nuts and bolts, <clears throat> Golden. Um, first of all, this, who can come, and where is it, and you know those those kind of specifics. Let me answer the last one first. Okay. Uh, the clinic is located at 727 25th Street. It's really central to the southeast community, and um, people can come who are uninsured, who are at 200 percent or below the poverty level set by the federal government. That means if you're family of four, you have to make 
$44,000 or less to be qualified to be served by free clinic. For a family of four. Family of four. Okay. Um, that may seem like a fair amount of money for some people, but when you start to take out the cost of health care and the rest of living expenses for people, people at that level are struggling. Four people living on that amount of money are struggling for health care. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of services can they receive for free? We're providing free primary care services. That means they will get a checkup by their doctor. We will also be doing some screenings, uh, but for the most part, they'll be getting free primary health care. So it means they don't have to go to the emergency room every time they think they need to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. We hope to provide that service right in the community. We're also going to provide dental care because we know that if you have healthy teeth and healthy gums, you're going to be healthy as a person. Okay. So dental care is a big part of what we're providing as well. Now, Reverend Willis, when you were you all were looking for a building, I mean, the building you're in now looks a lot different now than it did when you first started, didn't it? It looks different. Yes, it does. <laughs> and it's only because of, uh, I guess, the creative energy uh, of Golden and Gray and uh, that that said, we need a building, a facility that represents high quality and high standards. I think that's such an important part because a lot of people, when they hear free clinic, they get this idea that it's not going to be clean, it's not going to be state of the art, et cetera. That's an, a misconception, is it not, Mamie? Yes, it is. A big mix, misconception, and I know that. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to say and add on about this building, I think everyone should get the, uh, should have the opportunity to go see this place. It's unbelievable what, mm -hmm. how it transformed into this state of the art building. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. And it's going to be very well used. This I know because my people in the Southeast community need the services. Mm -hmm. What kind of reaction are you getting? In terms what of I'm hearing is, 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 is extremely positive. Mm -hmm. um, Golden and Gray has, have shared that uh, people are knocking on doors and, and coming in and they're curious. They, they know something is going on and there, there is a sign uh, identifying the facility. Uh, and there certainly is a need. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who, who are unemployed, underemployed, uh, and they they are meeting health crisis day after day after day, and they're looking for some place, and and this is a beacon of hope mm -hmm. uh, in the community. Great. Well, with the need, I've also seen. Uh, obviously, Golden and I have spent a uh, good amount of time down there over the last two three months, getting the ball rolling. Uh, when there are cars in the parking lot, people are knocking on the front and the back door wow. for for more information. 50% uh, of the time, they're not asking for medical information. They're just simply asking for information on how they can help, how they can volunteer. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. I had two, so the community is invested in this also. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I had two um, Navy retired gentlemen come by last week. They said we'd driven by three or four times. We saw a car in the parking lot. I gave them a quick tour, took their information, and they said they'll help us out with our grand opening and, and days to come. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Golden, the, the uh, constituents will get free care, but yes. it's not free to run this no, clinic. No, it's not so free at all. Talk to me about the, some of the funding and also who have you been able to hire in terms of doc Will it be doctors working there or um, yes. licensed nurses? What, what kind of person? All of the above. We mm -hmm. have hired Dr. Dwight Herbert, who is a primary care physician with the Riverside Medical Group, who will serve as our medical director. And Dr. Herbert had a practice in the same building several years ago, and wow. he's very interested in being back in the community to help with services. But let me back up. You ask about the services, and I will answer your other question. Mm -hmm. I do need to say that Riverside Health System provided the building that we're in, and the building was renovated by W.M. Jordan, and they did it at no cost to us. Wow. So it's in excess of a, of a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So when you ask the question about free care, no, it's not free. Aside from the building, that's over half a million dollars for renovations and the cost of the building itself and utilities and all. It cost about a million and a half dollars to run a free clinic full time. We're starting part time and to start part time it's about a half a million dollars mm -hmm. and we will be employing a physician, Dr. Herbert, to oversee 
the nurse practitioners who will work in the clinic. We will have nurse practitioners, nurses, and clerical support staff. We hope to have a social worker, and I already have two people ready to volunteer. Greg was correct in saying the community mm -hmm. has been extremely responsive in wanting to help. So you say you, you're starting part time. So part time. does that mean limited hours? What would be what will be limited hours? hours uh, we plan to have an open house for the community on November 20th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. and we will be open. Is that, that the week. 20th or the 21st? It's the 21st for the the 21st. You are correct. That yes, Sunday. Yes, for, for that correct, Sunday. Yeah, okay. for people to come and see the clinic and mm -hmm. to learn about our services. And that week we will be operating two full two days that week, and hours will be in the afternoon uh, into early evening, 3.30 until 8, because we're dealing with the working poor, because we felt that it would be important to have services available that correlate somewhat when people go to emergency rooms. Mm. And when we look at the data, it shows that people are going to the emergency rooms between those hours of 3 o'clock up until 9 and 10 at night. And you look at what they're getting, they're walking in and walking out. So mm -hmm. we hope that we can provide a service that people won't have to go to an emergency room, that they could come to us. Instead of episodic care, they would have continuous care and a relationship that we like to talk about as a medical home. And their, and their doctor will know them. I mean, the doctor we'll and the staff at the continue. clinic will know them. If they need specialty care, we will refer them through a project called Project Care, mm -hmm. where specialty doctors will see them. Um, the only thing they would have to pay for Project Care would be a small don donation for registration. That is just incredible. Delegate Baker, the is this an, a, a trial, if you will, or, or an example that you hope will spread to other communities? Are you all doing, doing the test pilot of, of this free clinic? I so certainly hope so. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know one thing that what Golden is saying that everyone has a vested interest in our area mm -hmm. because what we opened up with the information that you said that are people all thinking that they are drugs crime you know mm -hmm. that the crime is there but they are good people that want to help people mm -hmm. and I think you see this when you find out that somebody else gave money for the building somebody else exactly. gave the building all of these things and doctors are volunteering the volunteers so this is uh, something that all of us want to get done and I have a very very special interest in seeing that my community does well mm -hmm. this you all will serve children through seniors primarily 18 and above there is a program ah, called okay. famous that children can go see physicians and mm -hmm. and have care they're also cared for, for through pitch our community funded a uh, federally funded program uh, if children come in and need services we certainly will stabilize any situation and get the child to where that child needs to be mm -hmm. what happens if someone walks in gray I'll ask you this and they are out of the the financial range can they pay for services, or do you have to turn them away? And I'll get both I, of you I to think, answer, I guess. Uh, well, I think if they're, you know, we do, we'll do an initial screening, and that'll be both financial and medical, sort of a brief background. And if they are sort of without, uh, outside of that uh, niche of the, the patient that we are most interested in serving, then we certainly won't turn them away. If it's an immediate need, well, we'll do all we can. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, pitch has been mentioned. Pitch is is within a couple blocks of our facility and sees those that are uh, more underinsured uh, mm -hmm. less and less of the uninsured um, so we we certainly won't be turning anyone uh, anyone away well uh, depending on their need we'll point them in the right direction okay that's a perfect answer we'll redirect them to the service appropriate mm -hmm. for them okay so I live in Norfolk um, Lisa Godley who also works on the show, show lives lives in uh, northern Suffolk can we come uh, <laughs> I know we're not in the, in the range well, I'm talking I, about in terms of geographic is it only for Newport our News? Our target community is the Virginia Peninsula but if you were to come we would look for services in your community to connect you to those. There's a Western oh, Tidewater okay. Clinic, mm -hmm. uh, the different facilities in Norfolk. We would have information to provide people so that they would know where they could go. Our goal is to help people get healthy. 
And that says and it in a nutshell. We want healthy communities because we think if people are healthy, some of the other issues that you hear about all the time, just based on the first question you ask, mm -hmm. will go away. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is this such a passion for you? Where did this come from? Well, I, I guess I go back to my early beginnings. I grew up in the southeast community. I had moved away, and I returned back to this area to work. Had a lot of concerns about what I heard about the crime. But I also worked at a hospital where I saw people coming to the emergency room that could be cured for differently. And Dr. McKinley Price and I, several years ago, sat down with the staff at Riverside and said, we need to provide care in the Southeast community. Mm -hmm. We went to Reverend Willis's office along with some other ministers, and we looked at the services in that community. Pitch, 40,000 people live there. Mm -hmm. There's Pitch, and there's one pharmacy. There's not a mammography In the machine. entire area. Right. Wow. There's not a mammography machine below the Mercury Boulevard, which is designated as the Southeast community. There are no x-ray facilities in that area. Um, so we said we need to provide health care for this community that has double the rate of number of visits to the emergency room of anybody in the city, <clears throat> died a rate that's more than double of people in Virginia and the city of Newport News. So the incidence of need is, is overwhelming. From your perspective as a community activist, Reverend, and, and, and uh, feeding the spiritual soul of people, if they get their, their physical soul helped, what, what difference will that make? It'll make a tremendous difference. Uh, healthy people worship. Healthy people can come to worship. But also healthy people can at least find opportunities for employment. Healthy people can encourage children to go to school, can spend more time working with young people doing their homework. It makes, a, makes for a more vibrant community. Mm -hmm. when, when we don't feel well, we don't do much. We can't move well. And this is just a step in creating a more healthier, more vibrant Southeast community. Because these are quality, good people who live in the area, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, they have been underserved uh, through the health system. And this is another attempt to increase the level of service and uh, uh, prayerfully we will be a success. <laughs> I, I believe so, absolutely. If people want to donate, well, first of all, where does most of your funding come from? Donations. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hit right on that. Uh, Riverside Health System has committed a donation of 250000 um, guaranteed over a period of five years, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to other funding. Um, they have been extremely supportive, as you know, that was my employer mm -hmm. in this area, extremely supportive of us starting this program and putting resources from the medical center to help us. We have talked with other medical centers. There seems to be an interest in partnering with us, and we're hoping that's going to come to be. We receive donations from individuals. I already mentioned John Lawson mm -hmm. um, from um, W.M. Jordan. We have received donations from Spain Commercial. They were a leading sponsor at IGALA. And then many groups, Delta Sigma Theta, Sorority, for example, mm -hmm. gave us a check for $10,000. The AKs have given us a check. So the community is really stepping up. I've received to, a to call from the Lynx. They want to provide some support. And we have lots of members in our own church who have written personal checks. Uh, so the mm -hmm. community is coming forward. Okay. And I would Go like ahead. to put, add sure. to this. The Virginia Health Foundation has put money in for this, for a free clinic. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's going to be the one in Newport News, as I am on appropriations <laughs> committee. <laughs> and I would love to. So you got sure. the inside scoop. <laughs> Absolutely. How many, how many free clinics are there in Virginia? Do we know? Uh, about 28, 20, I believe. About 28. 28. Okay. Are there any on the south side? Uh, the South Side has the Western um, Tidewater Clinic. I'm aware of that. I'm okay. aware of federally funded community health centers on the South Side, more so than free clinics. Mm -hmm. um, there is and one. Then, there go is ahead. one. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. There is one in Gloucester. Gloucester, yes. yes. Gloucester, Gloucester yes. has the Gloucester Free Clinic okay. and the Lackey Clinic, York County. Yeah. And what's yeah. the difference between a free clinic and a 
like Pitch or some of the other clinics that you talk about? The uh, other federally qualified federal, centers right. like Pitch receive funding from the federal government, and they also have to charge a sliding fee scale. Uh, that okay. could vary. Um, and so you can can not charge anything exactly. because you have private funding. That's it's exactly not, right. Not federally funded. And they also take, the other clinics take Medicare and Medicaid. We don't. Some people don't have any of those things. Mm -hmm. They have no money and we're able to see them. We're only asking for a small donation for us to print their card that gives them access to our services and to some others. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I so appreciate it. And I do want to remind you that um, um, you can go to the Community Free Clinic of Newport News, their community grand opening, which is Sunday, November 21st from 2 to 6 p.m. And if you'd like to donate, you can get in touch with the Riverside Health System Foundation at 757-534-7070. And what started out to be as a desire to give young people real life knowledge of the entertainment industry has blossomed into one of the most popular afternoon activities at one Newport News High School. Our Lisa Guy gives us an up-close look at an innovative initiative that helps students not only become better entertainers but entrepreneurs in a matter of weeks. Joshua Head, Prentice Thompson and Sean Slaughter have a firm grasp of what it means to pay it forward. For years these three young men have given back to their community individually by sharing their knowledge of the music industry with young people interested in the performing arts. If anybody broke it, I would really try to hurt. Reach out as if there's a person there and the person there. So use a little body language. Go ahead, try it again. My vision's like a virtue, so I kept it in my circle. But one like year ago, instead of each one teaching one, Joshua Prentice and Sean decided to come together and develop the JPS Media Arts Program that would incorporate all of their skills. Okay, so now we go to the next track. Sean has been a touring artist and a professional engineer for over 13 years. Prentice has worked in the music industry as a producer uh, and as an engineer. And I've been a songwriter, composer, and producer as well. So we put it all together to, to do something uh, bigger than uh, what was already existing separately. JPS's pilot program started last summer as an enrichment program at an Achievable Dream Academy in Newport News. The program was so successful that this spring it will be expanded to allow more students and more elements. It will also be offered to several community organizations. In the spring, uh, we will be focusing more on career development as it relates to the music and the entertainment industry. So kids will learn how to start a business, how to actually create their own brands, how to be entrepreneurs. In addition to exposing the students to the many aspects of the entertainment industry, JPS recognizes the talent that they have and takes that talent to the next level. You know me more than I know myself. Good. Every time you're singing, Imagine that P. Diddy standing there with a million dollar check. If you do well, you get it, <laughs> all right? 18 year old Ben Jeter says before the program, he'd only considered performing hip hop, but the JPS program introduced him to other genres. At first I wanted to expand that knowledge base on what happens and expose him to new equipment that he just wasn't familiar with. I bought him some old records and let him hear some older records of how they use them in current music, showed them how to utilize them, showed them how to develop a sound, and then put together a song. It actually put me outside the box because um, at first I have first hand that like a lot of uh, young adults don't get the experience. On top of that, I can expand and be versatile with my music. Instead of, like I said, focus on hip hop, I can also do R&B, jazz different things, a lot of things that some producers don't do. Ben says prior to the program, he knew nothing about the marketing aspect of the industry, but now he does. How to sell records, how to manage your money, that's a very important thing. This media arts program has a lot of educational value to it. And so there is reading, there is writing. Um, and with the career aspect of it, uh, when it comes to understanding the music industry, understanding that Lil Wayne is more than just a rapper, but he's a brand and he owns a record label and he's a president of a company. He's a graduate of the University of Phoenix with a degree in psychology. 
The group says with so many schools cutting resources to media arts programs, they're hoping all they offer can fill that void, but even more importantly, give a young person the knowledge they need to succeed. You'll build a kid that has hope. You'll build a kid that has something to look forward to, has a dream. For Another View, I'm Lisa Godley. And that's our show for this evening. Please be sure to visit our website, anotherview.tv, and sign up for our eView newsletter. And if you're on Facebook, become a fan. Next week, why high school students drop out of school and what's being done to prevent it. We'll see you next time for Another View. Production funding is provided by A. Reddix and Associates, Health Information Resource Center, offering short-term training for long-term professional careers in medical coding. HIRCVA.net.